Well, the morning sports fans, internet folks, how are we doing this morning? William or Jones. It is a very somewhat cloudy day. A little comfortable temperatures outside. Maybe turning into fall weather for what you know. When I get English work, when I have to get my paperwork done, everything else turns out to be pushed aside, including those important things that we still need to take care of for ourselves. Case in point, doctor visits. The insurance company I'm going through right now, the specific plan, has a virtual doctor, maybe at least once a visit per year, maybe it's covered once a time, I don't know. But I am entitled to at least a visual, a visual visit. And regarding the COVID-19 happening these days, it's the only way we can get an interview going on. Now, I said it before in certain other videos that I've posted that I did that I still feel uncomfortable about talking to doctors. My blood pressure goes up every time I keep going into a doctor's office, regardless of the specialty they are. It could be an x-ray technician. I'm going in for x-rays or or it's a CAT scan or an MRI, the blood pressure goes up. I could go into a shrink and my blood pressure goes up. This is home. My blood pressure is going up. I'm feeling the tension and nervousness at this point over here because you've got to confront medical establishment. It's not exactly the facility, it's confronting the medical establishment. It's a mental health thing I've gotten all of these years. And I always hated it when they called it a white lab coat syndrome. To me, it's PTSD. I'm fairly convinced of it. And I had pushed it off and pushed it off and pushed it off. And here's the weird thing. I had a doctor call me a short time ago. She was trying to confirm the appointment. How did that grab you? One way that the forces well above you and beyond you are telling you, you must do this, Daniel, son. Yeah, well, I have to do this. I'm an old cranky fart. Broken down. Still walking around with the cane and stuff. Until I came to the office, that's the point I'll be here. And... I'm more focused on trying to survive some school at this point because I still want to get that damn education and that paperwork. And I'm trying to turn all over again. I have no idea what to do after I get a certificate. All I know is I'm pursuing it. But I can't pursue it if I am falling apart. Much like this apartment I live in. Falling apart, falling to pieces. But for me, mentally, I have fallen apart too many damn times, and people would probably consider me strong because I keep getting up. I keep getting up because I don't know any better. If I know any better, I'd be still wallowing in a damn muck and mud, just warning my head off. And then again, that's my own damn thinking. You guys are crazy, it's when I see insanity all about me including politics and yeah i know it's the ugly pandora's box at this point over here that i had opened up but that situation is an ugly 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 situation because i'm seeing a president who got onto a drug cocktail very experimental authorized for his use only and then he's walking around here thinking he's fine he's cured he's healthy COVID's. COVID's not a problem. People, on the other hand, are dying. And people, on the other hand, are contaminated with this damn thing. His own staff. People in the White House are already contaminated. He's making a big damn deal about it. Drives me crazy. He comes back home yesterday. And he's touting and flouting that COVID's not a problem. Yet people are jumping on his ass for that one. And he jumps on the fake media. <laughs> and says that the 
We have job markets. We have economy here. But you doing this COVID stuff. Talk about what I want to talk about. We've got people still dying from it. We've got legitimate cases, people dying from it. There have been other videos from other sources left and right trying to tell you that it's either legitimate or not legitimate. Depending on which particular source you go to and which particular idiots actually got the information or not, or which particular medical idiot, I'll just say it again, has actually got his facts right. Because when he goes against the established norm of his own people, of, or, or her own people, then there's conflict of information here. Well, of course, every doctor's got his own opinion his or her opinion, on the course of treatment and the interpretation of the symptoms, despite the fact they may be ironclad. But they still have a better course of treatment because they think this would work because they either heard about it, seen studies about it, or just want to take a gander at it. I hate it because in the medical establishment, it's a hit or mess with the human body at this point over here because we have different neurochemistries. We have different biochemistries at this point over here that reacts differently to other stuff. What acts normally for someone, or quote unquote normally for someone, can act differently for another person. You get, try this one, antibiotics. They came out with it, I think, in the 30s or 40s, penicillin. They touted this damn thing to be the strongest damn antibiotic out there in the world. Still is for some cases. But you get enough of that stuff, or your body is still trying to develop its own problems. And when you're given the uh, penicillin, your body starts reacting by shutting itself down, literally. And then you have to pump in more drugs to stabilize the body. I grew up that way. I grew up having an allergic reaction, a deathly allergic reaction to penicillin. It scares the hell out of me. It scares the hell out of me because now I don't know whether or not if I'm going to be able to take any other kind of strong antibiotic if I need it or not. Zithropax. All the damn things are going to be able to take. The erythromycins. But not the psyllins. Not the psyllin family. You're thinking about what about ampicillin? Ampicillin is the same family as penicillin. It's from the psyllin family. And I'm definitely allergic to any of it because they're still falling from the same strain. Different mutations, but same strain. So it's still got the RNA and DNA characteristics my body recognizes as, oh, oh no, you don't. You're not coming in this damn body. If you do, I'm going to kill it. Yeah, that's what it does to me. Even they kept trying to do penicillin, but the penicillin don't work on the COVID-19. This is one nasty virus that penicillin won't fetch. The limitations of medical science at this point over here. Medical science can only go so far with the experimentation, lab work, and experimenting with a hell of a lot of bacteriological viral strains out there to see whether or not we're actually going to have a chance of living or dying at this point. Then again, you got nervous and mental. And that's why even this is bad, because mental health, it depends upon the person's behavior and the neurochemistry at this point over here. It is one of the most elusive damn things I think keeps throwing up to psychologists and psychiatrists because what's good for one person may not be good for the other person. And that's kind of screwed up. But then again, it's a crapshoot when it comes down for behavioral health. Whether or not the guy's going to be healthy enough and honest enough with the doctors. People actually try to milk it. I've seen a few cases in my lifetime that they fake 
Crazy. Oh, fake crazy. I got enough trauma right now as it is. I don't need the fake crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm just broken. And that's okay. I accept being broken. I accept being broken. When you have issues, and they're more than you can deal with, you just have to live with the damn cripple. I'm emotionally crippled, and that's fine. Some doctors hope that maybe different types of therapy will be able to bring a person around. But it depends on the person is going to be willing enough to put himself through that situation in the first place. That includes me. I talk, I mean talk in therapy sessions if I had enough time. And go to group counseling and air out everything else out and hear everyone else jumping on my ass. You go into a 12-step meeting and people usually understand if they're hearing bullshit or not. Tell me something I don't really know. Some of them already walked the walk so they know they have the experience. They can see if somebody's already bullshitting them or not. I don't go to meetings anymore. It's not because both people ball, pull the wool up my ass. Is not able to get to them any. A lot of them are in evenings. The buses and transportation is not available. A lot of people use their own cars and transportation. Some of them actually have connections to other people to take them to different meetings when they actually can. And on the other hand, I haven't. Not for a long while. I miss group therapy. I miss group therapy a great deal. I miss talking to people and hearing what the hell they gone through and how they solved their own issues or what steps they took. Maybe there was something I could do. Or they're still stuck in the shit and they're dealing with it and they're living with it. Much like me. I would like to go back to work. <laughs> But I don't know if I can be able to physically actually be able to do it, and I'm not sure if mentally I'm, I'm ready for it. Except if you're fairly desperate for the damn thing. That's a different story altogether when you're desperate for it. I got myself adjusted to being a student. Being a student of the arts. Students of... Student of political and, and historical. Student of literature. And I like it. I like being a student. I think I've got a lot of maturity, a lot of context in my life. But I've gotten to know it. I've gotten to understand it. I've gotten to be it. And if I am that way, then I've got no issues in life. Not really. Because I'm able to relate with people as long as I have uh, context. I do the videos because to me it's context. Some people probably think it's bullshit. I've seen other people's videos and some of them are trying to like act like they're all big and bad and, and they know everything. I don't. I don't. I'm not a guru. I'm not an old wise sage. I'm oh, getting older anyway. But I'm not a damn sage. I'm a student. I'm still learning about stuff. I'm also understanding more and more about human behavior and human stubbornness, including my own. Student of my own damn problems and my own damn issues. I listen to people bellyache and bitch about their own damn lives online. I look at mine and I'm like, I'm like, what are these assholes? I am. We all need something or someone to understand what the hell we're going through. Actually, we need people for that one. And we also need to analyze what the hell is going on with us. Some of us just don't want to hide. I mean, some of us just don't want to deal with it. We want to hide from it. We want to hide from everything. We want to make sure that we are not willing or not able to deal with this shit. We want to be stuck in our own little misery. I've seen people do that a lot. 
And I know from time to time I've done it myself. Where's my hand on that one? There was a Bible I'll swear on it. Because misery, you're comfortable in your own stink. You're comfortable in your own wool coat. No matter how long you've hurt, you've worn the damn thing. No matter how itchy it's becoming year after year after year. After your skin becomes so so sensitive about changes happening around you, you're still wearing that damn coat, including in it during the heat. It's so damn hot. You're still wearing a coat and you're sweltering, but it's a coat. It's yours. It's your burden. It's your honor. It's whatever your ego has set up the damn thing for. I know. Because the stuff I'm saying happens to me. I talk from experience. I talk from life. I talk from observations. I am not an all mighty, all-knowing, all-seeing, all-powerful guru. I don't know my ass with hot rock half the time. The only thing I do know is I go into a lot of issues with myself and everybody else these days, and I'm not quite sure what the hell I'm doing anymore. I have to keep asking myself, what the hell am I doing these days? Why? Well, for God's sake, what the hell am I doing these days? I mean, if I don't even understand that shit, then what the hell do I understand in the first place? And you probably think it's rude for me to just to look at my damn phone at this point over here while I'm trying to clear the thing out and getting it set up for the next call or the next message. We'll do the same damn thing to everybody else. Why am I so, why am I different? I'm supposed to be polite. I find polite these days. We've all got our own issues. We've got our own hang-ups. I've got a lot of mental health issues right now that I don't even like dealing with half the time. That's why I deal with other things so I can compartmentalize and try to deal with life. I've had issues where it's got me laid, laid off and now away from jobs and situations where I don't even like to trust myself. I don't like to trust doing anybody else and physically. Just not quite sure if I'm able to do it or not. Not to mention I've got mental health handicaps and not to mention I've got issues regarding it. Issues on top of issues on top of issues. People will probably say, oh, bullshit, you're just this, you're just that. Ah. Look at me, I'm better than that. Ah. Yeah, they do a little shimmy on me. Pop out the chest, yeah, I'm better than that. Ah. All right, sure. Where's my pen? I'm going to pop this balloon here, this gas bag. At times, I know I can be a gas bag, too. I mean, I'm into a lot of things that I've done. I don't proclaim anything. I am one screwed up individual. I'm one screwed up into me. People don't understand that. If people don't like it, that's on them, not me, because I got enough issues right now as it is. But I'm not jumping on people because some of them may have caused the damn issues, but I am still responsible for my own damn thoughts, feelings, actions, and reactions at this point over here. Despite the fact that many people have gotten other issues that want to drive me crazy once, you know, I'm still responsible for me. I'm not responsible for the next schmuck, or for the guy behind me, or the guy behind me, side me. You see anybody around me? I'm it. I'm responsible for me. I am responsible for everything I say and do. And I'm held accountable to it. That's how it is. That's how it should be. Despite the fact what we're seeing these days is driving us crazy. Despite the fact that we're doing a lot of things that's confusing as hell. Despite the fact we're talking about stuff that other people generally don't talk about, or if they do, they usually get into fights left and right. I don't have any sage advice. I don't have any words of wisdom at this point over here. I can only relay what I see, what I do, what I experience, what I know, what I observe. And of all the context I keep studying, there's a hell of a lot for me to learn. 
People are looking towards one person or two, or, or actually just one person, just to solve everything. They ought to look in the camera, or they actually ought to look in the mirror. They got to look in the face. They got to look at their own face. Not just stare at the damn camera, they also got to stare at the damn screen. It's easy enough to talk to the camera. You say, hi, guy. The hardest thing is to stare at the screen. Yourself. Yourself. Well, that one, I'll probably talk at you later at this point. See how the rest of the day goes.